Hi, welcome back to week three of Fantastic Furniture Painting Back to Basics. Last week we talked about dots and we talked a bit about color. Um, I want to continue your practicing of some other borders and backgrounds that will also incorporate dots to make your painting more interesting. We're going to talk today about how to create a rope pattern, which is a great border, uh, how to create checks, which I'm sure many of you have already done, and also how to create a trellis background. You'll find a lot of uses for each of these, and each of them will incorporate and build on the technique of dotting that you learned in last week's video. So here we go. Let's start with the rope pattern. This is a short video about how to do a rope pattern. If you have your a little semicircle pattern and you've drawn your line, what you're first going to do is to trace a series of your semicircles just about touching one another all the way down your line. The next thing you're going to do so that you have alternating circles is to place your second row on the other side in the middle of the two on the first side you drew. So we'll trace those again just about touching all the way up your line. There's the beginning of your rope pattern. The next thing you're going to do is to take two colors of paint and you're going to start painting your rope. I'll start with the two full ones here, like so, and you're going to draw a straight line. You want to keep that line relatively straight because you're not going to dot where those two lines meet. So you're going to paint, you can paint either one or two of the same color. You're then going to come to the other side, skip a circle, and paint another two the same color. Again, you want to be careful at where this line meets because we're not going to be drawing dots there. Okay, let's take your second color and start painting the next two. And again, you can do this in ones or in twos. I sometimes like the effect of the two. And you'll see you're creating kind of a cool pattern. I'm doing this quickly, sorry for the messy, the messy approach. Then again, we take the turquoise and do the next two, and so on. The final step to doing your rope is to dot. <laughs> the, the ubiquitous dots, they're everywhere, just to finish it off. So you're going to dot all along the edge of your semicircles. This is a great pattern to use on the leg of a chair or a table or um, an apron of a table, which is that little piece that goes around the edge of the table between the legs. Give this a shot. I think you'll be happy with it. So here's a table with the rope on the apron and some rope down the legs. And then you're going to see a little bit more detail on that table so you can see the actual rope and the way that the dots frame. Here's a hope chest, again, with the rope on the top and a bit more detail of the rope on the side. Another great and very useful pattern for a background or a border is to use a checkerboard. Now, 
checks if you want to include a real pop of color are probably at their best when they're in black and white. However, when you create checks that are a tone on tone or uh, checks that are in an analogous color family, uh, that effect is a little more subtle, but it's just as effective. So I'm going to show you an example of, of how to do checks, and then I will show you several photos of black and white checks as well as checks that are done in analogous colors. Um, again, very useful, and also you're, when you're finishing your dots, uh, excuse me, your checks, you will use a dotting technique to make the corners of the checks look crisp and clean. So here we go. Here's a quick lesson on checks. You've probably already put checks on some of your painted pieces. I just wanted to show you briefly the way I do them. I like a flat brush and I like to try and create as straight an edge as I possibly can. You want to try to keep your corners straight. If you cannot, that's not a problem because as you're going to see, we will dot the corners that will create an illusion that they all meet one another. So what I like to do is do my edges first. Again, try to get those corners as crisp as you can, but if you're not always successful, that's okay. It's not life or death. Let's do one more. And then, as we've said many times before, dots are the cure for everything. This is not a color combo I would use normally, but I want, want you to be able to see the dots on this. You're going to crisp up your corners with dots. So here's a hall table done very simply with checks on the top. And you can see that the checks are dotted on each of the corners. Here's a chair that one of my students did to match the fabric she had, a tone-on-tone -tone check with a darker dot. And yet another example of checks on an Adirondack chair and again on the other side of the Adirondack chair. You can see there's a variety of uses for checks as background. Here they are in black and white, which is much more of a contrast as the base of some doorstops that David and I have outside our offices, the king and the queen. And here's a rope and a check example on the base of these doorsteps. And then one more example of a lazy Susan with checks all the way around. In this case, you need to be careful that you measure for each check so that they come out evenly. The last background technique we'll talk about today will be to create a trellis effect. And um, this is something that you, you create a diamond pattern for and then use a technique of loading your brush with a light touch, a heavy touch, and a light touch to create the effect of the trellis. Um, I use this a lot on uh, the backgrounds for things. For example, if you have a large space and you want to create a little bit of interest in the middle of that space, a trellis is a great technique to learn how to use. You can also move from the trellis technique to creating diamond shapes once you've created this uh, grid on your piece of furniture or whatever you're painting. So let's look at a quick video on creating a trellis. You're going to use the same technique to prepare for a trellis pattern that you did for your paisley. So you're going to create a grid in pencil or in chalk, whatever, and you're going to start painting. This technique is a little bit different than any of the dotting techniques. Basically what you're going to do is with a light touch, then a heavier touch, bear your brush down, and then a light touch where the two lines meet. So again, 
you're going to use a light touch, bear down with your brush, and then lift up again. One more time. A light touch, bear down with your brush, and lift up. A light touch, bear down with your brush, and lift up. What you will create will be a trellis pattern that looks like this. Second step to doing a trellis pattern is to give it a little dimension. So you're going to take a second color and just on one side of each section you've created, you're going to use that same technique, a light touch, a dark, a deeper touch, and a light one. A light touch, a deeper, and a light. Let's do it again. A light touch, pressure, and up. A light touch, pressure, and up. The last step in creating a trellis will be something you've done a lot, and that's to dot. So where these lines intersect, to finish it off, you're going to place a dot. Again, you would wait until your paint is dry and you can see it's a pretty nice effect. Here's an example from one of my students, a trellis on the side of a little step stool that she brought to class. And then this is a commission piece. It's an old dresser. You can see the trellis on the top of the two uh, flat spaces and then I'll show you a bit of detail. Uh, that's what they look like close up with a double dot. I love to use trellises on the top of garden totems. They're a great effect if you have a lot, a lot of floral going on on the bottom of the totem. You can pop the trellis on the top. So let's show you a couple of examples of those. Here's another one. And here's another one again. This one was done by one of my students. Another effect you can do once you've laid out this diamond pattern is straight lines. And you can see the top of this desk. I've put a trellis pattern uh, with, a, with a straight line and a shadow to cover the middle of the desk. So thank you for watching this week. And I hope you'll have some time before our next class to practice the techniques that I've explained on this particular video. Uh, next week, we will continue our discussion of color. Um, I think there's always something to learn about color theory and color combinations and color mixing. And we will also talk about some more techniques for borders, backgrounds, and decorative touches to your pieces. So again, thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you in class.